Okay, well, the delegation, um, it was three people from Belize, eight from the United States, of which four were sort of descendants from um, the Latin American, you know, diaspora, mainly from Mexico, Chile, and um, West Indies. Um, oh, I'll talk about that. Um, And I'll just, you know, the, the Garimbas, the um, opposition had targeted a lot of the uh, food depots so that, um, I, I think this happened in about um, April this year, they, the, they're called the Garimberos because they're the Garimbas and they're the people um, burning down. They'd burnt down a warehouse in, as, as Watagi um, containing about 40 tonnes of food that was to be distributed to families. And they regularly attacked the Mercals, the Peter Vales, and the Barrio Dentro clinics. But that was in, uh, as Wadagi was the next state to um, Miranda where we were. Um, and I told you about um, the Brahma, ex Brahma factory. Um, and then the, the large finger run by the MST. Uh, so the. It, the inflation is just massive. It's just unbelievable to get a handle on that. It's um, the prices go up every day. Um, I bought those little cafecitos. They're about this high. Black coffee in the street. Everybody's selling them, trying to make a bit of money for 400 bowls. And then the next day they were 500 bowls. And I asked, oh, why has it gone up? And she said, Oh, well, the plastic cups they're selling it in had increased their price. Um, I bought a um, empanada fried empanada from the local shop across where I was staying. It was in a poor area. One On the Saturday they were 2,500 bowls, bolivars. The next day, or on the Tuesday, they'd gone up to 2,800. Mm. So, um, um, so the, black, the, the dollar exchange on the official market is 3,000 bolivars, one US dollar. But in the black market it's 15 to 18 or 20,000 bowls. For one dollar, a cheap lunchtime meal at a city cafe would cost you about ten thousand bolivars. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, there's no cash. What's happened is that um, it all got stolen. So I couldn't use, there's no credit card, you can't use credit cards. They've had to stop that because of the um, corruption, the fraud and the black market. So um, uh, what happened? Um, there's no paper money. The yeah, most of it got sold. 25 tons of Venezuelan paper notes were found in Asuncion in Paraguay um, a couple of months ago. Um, Leopoldo Lopez's wife, Lillian Tintori, she was found with 200 million bolivars in cash in her Jeep. Yeah, you know, it's, it's boxes of stuff. And that was to hand out, I think that was for the next ray, um, um, uh, next, sorry, um, the Garimbas that were going to happen. And, and um, Yulali just told me that's already started. It started again with the Grimbers. Um, so, and on top of that, um, uh, she ha yeah, she'd got that money from a private bank, uh, supposedly to pay the pensioners because the pensioners, you know, they've now got a pension. Everybody over the age of 60, um, and they were, the private bank was saying they had no cash. Well, obviously they'd given it all to um, Lillian Tintori. Um, on top of that, some 40 million. Um, and I think that's US dollars, was found in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil in paper money of 100 bowls each. Now these are 100 bowls each. I've had 100 there. That's a, I couldn't get hold of any cash because all, all the money's gone. People are queuing up at ATMs, you know, from 7 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock at night to try and get cash out of their accounts. They've got money in their accounts, but there's no cash. Um, and th this would be, this is, so this is a, um, this is a 10,000 bol bolivars, and there's 100 here, so I'd have to use all that to pay for a meal. Mm. It's, it's just sort of insane. And luckily, 
There's no way I could have paid for a hotel because I wouldn't have been able to get hold of the cash. You can't use US dollars. I would have had to do it on the black market. So luckily, um, a friend or well, one of the women who uh, was in Venezuela analysis was going to Mexico and she let me have her room. I, I think otherwise I would have been on the street. Um, the government has decreased here. Yeah, so that's, so I got, yeah, I think they couldn't give me cash for 10,000 bottles, so I had to get two or three of these. <laughs> and so you just peel out 400 for a cup of that. coffee. <laughs> yeah, just to show you that. Um, the government has decreased the importation of food by 70%. You know, that, that's how much they've had to cut back because of the drop in pet petrol prices. But in January, I think January 2016, petrol was only getting $20 US dollars a barrel. From that member that in the height was $110 a barrel. Uh, the prices of a kilogram of rice, I went and visited my mates in the um, in Katia. They told me it used to be 700 bolivars, it's now 16,000. That's rice, a kilogram of rice. So that's increased 23 times in, in a couple of years. A kilogram of pasta used to cost 500 bolivars, it now costs uh, 12,000 bolivars. That's an increase of 24 times. A kilogram of black beans, which is their, black beans, which is their staple diet, well, used to be 500 bolivars. It's now 8,000 bolivars. So that's, and that's coming from Mexico. That's an increase of 16 times. 15 eggs used to be 1,000 bolivars. That's now 12,500 bolivars. So it's a 12 times increase. A fridge. Um, luckily, um, um, my friend Blanca had bought a fridge earlier on, that used to be 100,000 bolivars, that had now increased to 3 million, which is an increase of 30 times. A stove used to be 20,000 bolivars, it's now 2 million. That's an increase of 100 times. Now you can imagine what they're facing. And my friend um, Blanca um, Claret worked six days a week selling chicken in the shop from 2 o'clock till 7 o'clock for six days a week, and she could just feed her family three children and that, that was all. She said she'd have to work for eight years to buy television, not pay rent and not eat. That's, that's how bad it is. Um, the government blames the web page um, Dollar Today for the increase in the rate of the Bolivar. That's published on the web page. And the Maduro government has allowed a massive amount of capital to disappear by giving US dollars for Bolivars at a fixed rate of, say, 3,000 per US dollar to any company which said that they would um, in, um, in buy goods to sell in, in, in Venezuela, they'd buy goods from the United States or that they would um, invest. And they didn't, they just banked the US dollars and not import the goods or they exchanged the US dollars back on the black market for you know 15,000 bolivars for one dollar, which is a profit of five times. And that's what happened over the last few years. And also on top of that, Colombia set up these um, money exchanges on the border which, um, where the Mafia used the Bolivars, people travel over there with Bolivars, buy dollars, um, and they, and the, but it allows the Colombian Mafia to launder their, their extra cash from drugs. Many Venezuelan capitalists set up the shelf companies, they call them um, uh, the Malatin, um, Bolsas de Malatin, I think, uh, to get US dollars. Um, but, and they're blaming, you know, these shelf companies, but someone leaked a document, a huge document, 800 pages, I haven't read it, I'm going to give it to Fred to read, um, from the Treasury, and they stated, they listed all the people who had got US dollars from the government on the, on the, on the low exchange rate, 3,000 for just one US dollar, and the fourth largest receiver of that was um, Cisneros, the massive, um, the billionaire in the United States. So. Um, whether it's actually due to these shell companies or not, you know, there's a, all the capitalist class within Venezuela is using this mechanism, using this to get absolutely rich. Um, the total amount rewarded, which is quoted in one of the newspapers I've handed around, if I can just pass them around, um, is 25 billion US dollars that's been taken out of the country um, and um, abused. And all the students you see here have come here all the um, opposition supporters who come here, they were able, they were able to get 5,000 US dollars. Anyone who wanted to come and study abroad were given 5,000 US dollars on the low exchange rate uh, to come here. That's why they're all opposition supporters. You know, they rorted the system to get here. And they just, what, studying, learning English, whatever, any stupid um, topic, subject. My, my friend, um, 
uh, the Minister of... My friend Maria, she was really fed up and pissed off. She'd worked for the Minister of Health under Chabot, Eugenia Saber, um, and she, according to, my, to Maria, she had stolen 800 million US dollars out of the country when she was health minister. And she did it by take, getting money to build six um, big hospitals around the country, and she used that money uh, to launder it and um, to um, rort it. She appointed her son's friend to run the Institute of Hygiene where my friend was working. She was making thousands of, probably some of the people here who would have gone to that institute where she was making all those vaccines to distribute a very low price around um, Latin America. Um, well, um, she, she said it worked for two years, but when as soon as that, um, Chavez died, uh, she had started having trouble with the minister. This woman was, um, had come out of the army. She'd been a colonel in the army, a medical doctor in the army. And she had, um, yeah, so she, she sacked her um, because she was honest and wouldn't take the bullshit she was putting on her. And, um, and so she's now built this, the, the, the Sardair, the uh, minister, the ex-minister, has now built this huge house in Santo Domingo and her son drives a Lamborghini in Miami and that's how it goes. And they also had another close friend who'd been the former minister of science He's now the ambassador to Austria. He keeps an ex-wife and daughter in a Paris apartment and has money in a Swiss bank account. So there's massive corruption happened. And got, I mean, it was always there. Yeah. And as another friend said, mm -hmm. I mean, it's always, it's in the whole of Latin America as well, all the other countries as well. And you, but you don't hear about it. You're hearing about it in, in Venezuela because the, you know, the international media trying to destroy it. Um, but it's certainly got much worse after Chavez died. Um, and there's been a lot made about CLAP, C-L-A-P. It's a sort of a distribution of food to keep people from starving. But it's only probably distributed every one or two months, maybe two months, and it's just a kilogram of sugar. I saw it distributed to my friend. Um, and even the middle class are taking it because they're desperate to. Two kilograms of corn flour to make a rapist, two litres of cooking oil, a bottle of tomato sauce, a bag of, um, small bag of coffee, um, beans and a, a bottle of ma mayonnaise and a kilogram of black beans and that's all imported mostly from Mexico. I mean no it doesn't include any fresh vegetables or meat or chicken or eggs anything like that. Um, and so you've got to remember that you know Venezuela depends for 96 percent of its exports on oil and the sort of criticism of the government they've failed to take any meaningful steps over the last two years to control the inflation um, there's many factions inside the government, um, one involving Celia Flores, one involving Diosdado Cabello, the other vice president, one involving Tariq As Asamini, he's a vice minister, he's in charge of the massive, um, it's sort of the exploitation of, or the digging up of um, the precious metals in the Amazon, and they're going to destroy 115 kilometres of, uh, of, of forest to dig all that up. We've done deals with the um, transnational corporations, big mining companies. People are really horrified at this. Um, but, you know, there's an argument that they need the money uh, to, to keep going, but at, at, what, at what cost? And is that um, necessary? Um, I guess Maduro has to negotiate with all those factions. He didn't come out of the army. He came out of the trade union movement. So he hasn't got that control uh, or, or, or an authority um, within the army. So, but during his time, I mean, it is in his favour. He did keep the missions funded. All the missions they, they weren't cut. All the, all the 35 missions that are around in Venezuela. But on the other hand, the Bolly bourgeoisie, they call them, are not strong enough to carry out a counter-revolution. But the social movements can't push forward either. So there's massive corruption, bureaucracy. And of course, the party they set up, Peace of, still isn't really democratic. And the nationalisations of factories hasn't worked. As soon as they're nationalised, um, they stop producing for many reasons: inefficiency, uh, unable to run a, 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 a business, they're not used to it. You had no organised working class virtually in, in uh, Venezuela. Forty percent of, the, of, of people um, lived by selling um, stuff in the streets, cups of coffee, you know. 
bits of material, um, cotton, anything, anything you get your hands on, you, you just live by selling it in the street. And because they've relied on oil for the last 100 years, that was discovered in about 1915, 1920, exploited. Um, so the Maduro government it really needs to transfer the unproductive state and private property to the productive communes if they're going to survive. Um, um, I'm running out of time and I want to um, maybe have time to ask questions. But just, I haven't gone through the Garimbas and what they've done, but it's absolutely horrendous what they carried out. They attacked a maternity hospital. Luckily no one was, um, that was in Los Tecas, no one was died. They survived, they got them out. They were going to tear up a hundred pages of, of law, of codes, that criminal codes that had been written under Chavez, and that would have meant, you know, um, that covered laws against drug dealers, um, all those criminal acts are going to be, have a new law. This, was the, this is the old National Assembly that got elected, um, run by the opposition. They're going to enact a, a new law to return property to the original owners. Um, there was going to be a law to sell off all the housing that was given to um, the poor families. Um, and any laws passed, Maduro had to sign so he wouldn't sign them, of course, so it was passed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court struck them out because they were unlawful. And um, so the National Assembly refused to negotiate with Maduro and recognise him as the president of the country, and he was legally elected until 2018. So he was forced to not recognise the National Assembly. So when any arguments you come across about the National Assembly and the control by uh, you know, they'd won the elections, that you, you need to sort of use a few of these arguments. Of, of why, um, why, why you had to move. So with the National Constituent Assembly, you got 545 delegates. There is a, a, um, a, a criticism that they were hand-picked by PUSOV. There's 364 uh, were based on territorial areas. You could vote, you had two votes, one for where you lived in the municipality and another for um, 173 sectorial delegates based on if you were a pensioner, student, youth, um, fisherman, a farmer. Um, uh, or a worker. And so this was an attempt to give the social movement some sort of power as a branch of government. Uh, at the moment they had none. They were, you know, you had the, commun the community councils, they had amalgamated to form communes all over the place, um, but they had no power. And so they think with this um, National Constituent Assembly to rewrite the con Constitution, they'll go for a vote, they'll go sit for two years, they're sitting every weekend for two years, and then they'll come up with a list, a list of proposals and that'll be voted on by the whole population. Um, but that it'll eliminate the mayors and the local councils. So that will give them more power and uh, also eliminate a, an area of corruption. Um, and and be, I mean, why he had to do this and why it's probably it was a, the only possible move was that because of the National Assembly being controlled by the opposition, Maduro couldn't even sign any deals with the um, transnational companies over oil exploration or investments that had to be approved by the National Assembly, or they wouldn't approve anything. So the government was virtually stymied. Um, it's been a campaign of terror since Trump got into power in January. They've really funded the opposition to um, millions of dollars. Um, and the opposition were going to set up a parallel government, but they really didn't want a government at all. Anyway, the US um, Department, State Department, put the car wash on that. They didn't want a parallel government. Um, and so they were emanating, uh, um, f copying what had happened in Brazil and Argentina with government with legal coup, a legal coup, parliamentary coup against trying to get that against um, Venezuela. And they're trying to provoke Maduro uh, into retaliation so that they could then call on the US to intervene. That was their strategy. And this week, um, I think um, Trump has again called on, um, banned certain Venezuelan officials from visiting the US. Not the middle class, of course. We thought it was a ban on anyone going to, to the United States, but it's not possible, because it was all the, the middle class that go back and forth to Miami. There's been 126 people killed in the Garimbas. Um, so I'll just try and just, um, the kidnappings, there's been, there's been terrible kidnappings. My friends, two lots of friends, different friends. Um, one had had his sister's husband was kidnapped. Um, they had to pay two million bolivars to the National Guard to get him released. Uh, and another friend, um, her niece, was only a 17 year old girl, um, 
driving her car. She was caught and kidnapped and held for five or six hours. That's really scary for a 17 year old girl. They had to pay up 5,000 US dollars to get her released and the car was stolen as well. So the police and the National Guard are carrying out these sort of activities because um, they have the power to do so and um, they're desperate. Um, I, I won't go into the um, concentrated assembly, the roads of that. So the conclusion is it's really on a knife edge, it's sort of a stalemate. Um, the economic situation is absolutely dire, people are starving. I saw two people going through the rubbish bins in, on the street where I lived in a poor area. They tell me in the richer areas, middle class areas, people queue up to go through the garbage bins to get food, not to, just food and maybe a few clothes. There's plenty of food, I, I took photographs of it, there's plenty, plenty of food but it's just so expensive people can't eat it. My friends also, she's got a maid and the little boy, she has a little boy. When the, he came to live at her place, he was two years old and he was quite sick and they found out that his haemoglobin level was six when it should have been 12 and because he hadn't been eating any meat or any protein, he'd just been eating yuca and uh, cassava, um, just carbohydrate. The, so it's essential that um, the economy is improved especially over the food situation, they get a hand on that. They've just banned, they've just put a, a, a set price on 50 food items, but all that'll mean is not a solution at all because they'll just disappear from the markets um, because that'll, you know, that they won't be able, you won't be able to buy them because they'll hang on to them until um, th that changes. Uh, Maduro has announced he'll go off the dollar and try and use Russian or Chinese currency. Um, one hopeful element is that William, who runs the, um, the brigades from New York, who's a Venezuelan, thinks that the floods in Houston will increase the price of oil. That will help them because all the refineries in Houston are flooded and can't operate. The Chavistas say they have about 70% of the population with them, um, especially young people, because they know they're getting access to an education. Otherwise, they'd be selling, you know, shit and rubbish on the streets. That's the only way to survive. The opposition have large sums of money. A section of the National Guard and a majority of the police and the secret police have been, you know, are against the government. Uh, the secret police have just been found to falsify evidence. I think it's in the papers uh, handed around. To falsify evidence that would um, be able to prosecute the opposition for the atrocities they've carried out. Um, the communes are building, but they're just not strong enough yet. And according to one of the um, communes that was spoke, speaking at the ex Brahma factory, the proletariat Unios, they only account for 2% of the economy. So they've got to get a handle on the, the state and um, the state-owned um, businesses or, uh, and really hand them over to the communes. What they've got to do is get hand all these businesses and food distribution and growing of food over to the communes, the larger bodies, which are democratic and, and, and socially owned, to, uh, that are productive and that are working um, and increase their um, percentage of uh, the economy. So we need international solidarity. It's very essential to support the Venezuelan people. Um, the opposition leader, one of them, Freddy Gonzalez, is going all around the world, um, all over the US and, and Europe. Um, Lillian um, Tintori had made 13 trips and visited 30 countries promoting the opposition, what they're doing. Luckily, they haven't come here, thank God, but <laughs> have to organise something against them. They're whipping up support for the opposition with all the lies about dictatorship, lack of democracy, and terrorism in the Maduro government. And it's, I think it's obvious the Maduro government is losing the international communications battle um, for a lot of different reasons. But last week they uh, met in, um, Maduro held an international conference in Caracas to try and counteract the, um, this misinformation that's being spread and to change the, the image. Um, but also in the last week I think all the um, government leaders including, you know, Macron, no, uh, Mac, is it Macron from France? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's also um, the leader in Spain, oh, yeah, Trudeau in Canada, yeah, which is a shock. They're all meeting up to, and Italy and um, and Germany um, also. <coughs> they've spoken out against Venezuela. They met up in one of the islands. I think it was Jamaica, but I'm not sure. 
uh, next week. They're going to do that to um, organise their campaign and continue the campaign. Um, so we have to step up our solidarity to counter this information and try and get a message across that it's different. I'll stop there. Sorry.